Uh-huh. I want that all in there every time. I want you just like smacking your hands and setting up all on camera every time. Bobby Lee is coming shortly. So for those people who have YouTube me and messaged me, uh, the, the interview is here. We just do an intro. So That's right. Bobby, you can fast forward if you want. I hope you don't because intros are sometimes fun. You get a little information. But uh, Bobby Lee is coming up. Hilarious. Intense. Everything you've ever dreamed of. Holy crap. I don't think he gets more serious. Bobby Lee than on my podcast. He, he opened eventually up. eventually gets serious. You have to. Right. You will, he will get there. You're going to laugh. You're going to go, oh, my God. And then you're going to go, wow. And then he lets it go. And he doesn't. I think he does it with me because we both experienced a lot of stuff in our lives. And we've been friends for a long time. And uh, it's nice that he's comfortable enough to. Uh, he just supports me. He has such successful podcasts. He has two now. And uh, they're both incredibly successful. And yet, I know he doesn't have any time. But he's come on the podcast again. He actually came with Kalila to the other podcast I had. And uh, I've been on his show four times and we're just buddies. He goes, whatever you need. And that's what I like because I have friends that are incredibly busy and they're just busy and they're not coming back on the podcast. They don't have time for it. They're doing And I'm grateful if they even came on. So that's all you ask for. But Bobby Lee is the kind of friend. Nick Swartzen, Tom Welling. These guys come back. Stephen Amell, Jamie Lynn Sigler. They come back on the podcast. And that's really... Uh, it's really cool, man. It's cool when they take time from their busy lives to join us and uh, share personal shit, man. Uh, you know, I don't want to get into all the coronavirus stuff. Uh, you know, you guys hear about that on the news every day. You don't want to hear it. You know, it's, just, it's been a lot of stuff and there's so much misinformation and all this and you, know, you don't know what to believe. And now I believe in quarantining yourself if you think you're at risk and you think you're at... And the big problem is, is, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not a doctor, Ryan, but don't you think the big problem is spreading it to people who have weak uh, immune systems and all these pre existing conditions or old people? So I get it. I'm not going around them. And I'm going to try and limit the amount of people I even see, which is hard because I need to be around people. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing is just wash your, wash your hands. Be responsible. Be responsible. Don't be a moron. Don't go out to the bars. Stay out of groups. Yep. We're trying to minimize. I think if you just minimize everything right now, because we and... don't have the medical supplies to to account for that. It's crazy. It's just it's just a crazy world. It never. I mean, you know, I think it really when it got it got when they said the NBA shutting down. You know, you heard South by Southwest. You said okay, mm-hmm. the NBA, the NHL. When the then the stock market's playing, you're like, wow, this is. What they canceled the, something serious. Yeah. But, um, you know, you stick together. We've, you know, this, the, the planet has made it through so many things. That doesn't mean you should take it lightly. It just means, you know, do the best you can and try to be responsible and smart. That's all. I'm not going to, I'm going to end that. I don't think we need to talk about that anymore. Uh, you know, before we get to uh, my good friend, Bobby Lee, I just want to say again, thank you for listening to the podcast. I say it because uh, I just do. Um, without your subscription, without your listening and, uh, you know, the little notification thing on the YouTube, mm-hmm. Ryan works so hard. So I commend you on that. And I really hope you guys give the video a chance, watch it, Let's, you know, you can listen to it, subscribe, but watch it too and spread the word, share it. Uh, the interviews are great with Jamie Lynn Sigler. I teared up. I had a tear tripping down my face. It was, it was intense. It was beautiful, funny. It was everything. Uh, the Martin star, uh, was a great interview. It was a great interview and he got deep and, um, uh, just give it a chance, you know. Also, a shout out to the Patreons. Uh, I did a live pod. Uh, I've been doing since I'm, you know, at home mostly now. Um, I've been doing live Instagrams. I've been doing live Facebooks. And all of a sudden, people are joining Patreon. They're subscribing. because The subscription to, to the podcast is free. But people are, you know, donating a dollar, five dollars, a hundred dollars a month to, you know, to to help the podcast. And but by the way, you don't just do that and get nothing for it. There's bonus footage, which we're going to shoot one today. There's inside of me that the the, the um, patrons get to ask. I respond a lot on there. It's like a community of friends. And I always said, if it gets to a certain point where it's big enough, where you know it's paying for everything and we're doing well, hey, let's uh, let's have a patron party, a patron party in L.A. I'll rent a place out or my backyard. It'll just be patrons, maybe a few celebs, but no randos. No <laughs> randos are showing up. It's like everybody there is like, are you a patron? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, great. Yeah, that's it. And you, Ryan. And me. I'm invited. Yeah, Bryce is invited. Jess is invited. You guys all work hard. Oh, great. So join Patreon. Uh, whatever uh, is is great. I appreciate that. The podcast, the live podcast, was canceled for um, March 31st, and that was uh, at the North Door. And we have 
changed it to July 2nd. So go on my Instagram or my Twitter. Uh, it's at the North Door in Austin, and uh, it's going to sell out. So we're doing two shows, a 7.30 and a 9.30 at the North Door on July 2nd. And that's going to, it's a Thursday night, so it's a better night for people. It's going to be great. Hopefully, you know, it, it gets better. Things get better. And by July, we're good to go. Uh, camp Rosie, people have been talking about it. Uh, my, my first camp, uh, adult camp I'm doing for the October Halloween weekend, 30th and 31st. You're going to go to that, right? No, <laughs> because the wedding I was supposed to go to in April is now moved to that it weekend. It was changed. Why mm-hmm. would anybody have a fucking wedding on that weekend? Because it's England and they don't really do Halloween stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know. Halloween originate in Ireland? That's not England. But it's close. It's not I'm the same. Skip and a jump. Point being, I can't go to the Camp Rosie because right. my cousin's <clears throat> wedding is now that weekend. Right. Okay. But the uh, the Camp Rosie is going to be on that weekend. Let me tell you, there'll be links soon. So just wait for it. But it will sell out. Probably 150 to 200 people. That's all that can attend. There's going to be some some uh, tickets that you can get that maybe room near my bunk or in, in my area, in my cabin, not bunk. You don't just, but there's bunks and cabins. But sure. It includes your food, your, your snacks, all your alcohol, your bedding, your, uh, uh, activities, uh, parties, uh, costume, it's going to be a freaking blast and we'll get more into that. So also if you want to get any merch from left on Laurel, my band or the podcast inside of you, go to, go to inside of you online. Um, we've got great podcasts coming up, uh, great guests. And you know, at a time like this, when we're sitting around, we, you know, you need to, I hope people will continue to do podcasts. At least we had things in the can. We got things in the can for, uh, for the next, at least a month, at least a month and great guests. So yeah. Let's talk to Bobby Lee right now. Uh, he's hilarious. I've known him for a long time. He'll, he'll surprise you. He'll upset you. Both. Both at the same time. It's, it's, he's something else, and he goes balls out, literally. But check this out. Check this podcast out. Let's get inside of Bobby Lee. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Who is this? I like this guy, but you sit next to her? The, yeah, I, I sit over here. Uh, yeah. This is Ryan. He's uh, the engineer. I love him. Ryan's the best. you never met him? Yes, I have. Have you? Have we met? Not no. Just, I mean, just now. Oh, because I like your, the profile of your face. You look like a hawk. <laughs> a cock? A hawk. A hawk. Yeah, he's got one of those angular hawk faces. Oh, like he'd be a good president. Like, like Delia? President good president. Chris Delia. Yeah, because on, on the coin you would your your profile uh, yeah. looks president or he does have a good like a Lincoln face. Yeah. Like a Lincoln? All right. Let's I'll take, take it. I'll take I, it. I don't know. Are you producing the show now or what? Uh yeah. And I'm uh, sitting here recording things in the shit. Are you is this your it. show right now? I could just watch you interview him all day. No, I didn't even know we were starting. I was just asking some questions. You, I, I need I need to know about my environment. You thought I was going to be angry. I The first thing I said to Ryan was like, Bobby's going to come in pissed off, and he's Ryan. the one who's two hours That's late. Ryan? That's Ryan. <laughs> you, you know, the guy you've known forever. Yeah. No, because... Um, you, you well, pitch I wanna meeting? Be, I want to... I want to be on time for you. And, you know, I said yesterday, I go... What about four thirty? And then you, saw, you f- I felt like you were like, it's got to be four. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, what? In my head, now just listen. So in my head, I'm like, how am I gonna? Because I'm in Culver City with, what's a bald headed guy that that does um, America's Got Talent? Mickey Rourke. Uh, Mickey Rourke. No, no, who is it? Uh, Howie Mandel. Yeah, was it with that guy, and that Filipino guy, Joe Coy. Yeah, and then I was there with them at the Amazons. And I was like looking at the clock and I'm just like, now 340. You were at Amazon, the studio, Amazon, not the Amazons. No, we went, the Amazons in the South Africa, America, South America. South America is where it, the Amazon is. That's yeah, where we were. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So I was flying there from there. No, we were at the company and we were pitching something. And then I was like, oh, in my head. And I said it out loud. I go, Lex Luthor is going to be mad if I don't show, leave now. And they're like, who's Lex Luthor? I go, Michael Rosenbaum. And they go, oh, we're fans, all that stuff. <laughs> You did not. I did. You did. Yeah, because I was panicking. Why were you panicking? You're the one who's like, I got to do the fucking Rosenbaum's podcast. No, I would do anything for you. But my point is, is that you were the one that was like, it's got to be four. And all. anyway, we're here and we're doing it. I didn't say it had to be four. I just said, hey, you is know. This how you, let's, 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 did you? Jesus <laughs> Christ. Know. Dude, 
I, I love you. I, I'm blown away by. <laughs> we haven't talked since you went to off to that well in the center. There's your coffee. Oh my god, Good, she's the perfect best. timing. Thank you so much. Look at that. Thanks, Jess. Thank you, Jess. I just remember you always like, you know, you're sleeping on a couch, you're doing all these things. You're always a funny, lovable guy. We all loved you. We all were rooting for you, or at least I was. And now I think you're like, you're like taking, you're making so much money. You are like, <laughs> you fuck you. You are uh, no. Don't oh, try, you fuck. Don't, don't try to act humble. Don't you try. Fuck you fucker you. No, I'm so happy. You bring for that you. up like that. You are so listen. I got to me. nothing going. You're a regular dude who's now fucking doing it. Everybody wants you. You're with Howie, Howie Mandel. This is dude. You're doing. You're doing a. Po- okay, you're doing uh, two podcasts. All right, all right. Hang on a second. If you want to do this, let's you do it. used to live in an apartment. I did four podcasts. The most any guest has come on. I went to your little apartment. You're our favorite person. I love you. And in fact, all your get all your um, fans. Every time, it's funny because I would read the comments. They go, "Well, if Rosenbaum would do fucking video, we'd we'd watch his fucking show." Tell that. And I was like, we got to do video. That's the reason I did video is because your fans said they'd, they'd watch if I... And they're clever. I listen to them. Yeah, yeah. They're intrinsically f- clever. They are. You listen to them too. I listen to everything what they say. Everything. Yeah. The way I dress, the way I behave, the way I walk. Does it bother you when they no, say something bad? I don't bad? care. Nothing. I don't care. Because I don't listen. What's the worst thing <laughs> someone said about you that's a fan that, that loves you but said something? Chink. Yeah. She, somebody said, shut up, you chink. Was it a white person though? I, you know how sometimes the profile photo is like, you know, of like a piece of, of like a flower. Sometimes they do that. Right. So you don't know who the face yeah, is. Yeah, I don't know who it is. Or sometimes it's like, you know what I mean? The symbol of some sort of sporting team. Right. But the Kansas City m- m- people, whatever the team is, you know what I mean? Kansas the, City the, Chiefs. The Chiefs. Right, right. You know, and uh, they won, right? They did. I saw the game. No, they didn't. Yeah, yeah they did. They I, did. Saw the, I saw the game. You were there? No, what happened was I, um, I was in Hawaii. And I was flying to Hawaii, and in line was this uh, Chinese fella. He was in um, the Hawaii Five O. You were in Hawaii Five O too. No, Magnum PI. Magnum PI. He he was also in the Lost. Was it Lost? Chi- just Lost. Was a Chinese fella's name Daniel Daniel, uh, Daniel Day Kim's. He great great actor. So he's in line with me, this Chinese fella, and he goes, uh, he's Korean. And That's he, what I was gonna say. I, 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 like, I, know, yeah, I didn't yeah. want to say it because if I corrected you and I was wrong, racist. That's what I was. I was like you baiting you. I was baiting you. I know you. you. Yeah, yeah, like, I knew it. I didn't. So mean. the Chinaman said, um, "You know, he had the Corona Corona mask on. He didn't." And um, he goes, "Hey, I go, what's up, China China?" And he goes, <laughs> "He goes, come to my house to watch because um, he lives in Hawaii to watch the Super Bowl. Now, I've never seen a Super Bowl in my whole life, but when he asked me, I was like, I have to do it." So I went Do to you his like house. him? Is that why you're, I, you're I'm a big fan? Him? Big yeah, fan. Yeah. Um, and I, I went to his house and I, I watched this whole football game, the first one I've ever seen with his kids and his family. It was actually pleasant. It seemed very normal to me, you know? Right. Um, so that's how I know about the Kansas City people. Do you act normal like at people's houses that aren't like, do you like when you're hanging around normal people who don't want you to start like shitting on the floor or do, doing the licking someone's dick on camera. Like, do you, those are things that are blasphemous things that you're saying. I don't do either one of well, those I things. Well, I saw a video that Santino, the great Santino. I ki- the great Santino, I kissed his orange sack. Okay. And in Korean culture, if you have That's red hair. That's a lie. You're, you're about to tell a lie. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I no Korean it. culture. I, I know. I kissed the sack. You kissed a sack. Yeah, because it's a yes. I don't and- think it was a sack. I think it was a shaft. I looked at it and I think well, it was a I'm shaft. I'm the one that kissed it, so I would know. My assistant Jess goes, You have to see this. I saw it. She goes, It's so funny. She started to show me. I don't want to see it again. <laughs> why? I, I don't know why. It it wasn't like I thought it was it was funny, but it was just it was kind of like, what? What? Yeah, yeah. It was almost like too, was it too much? Did you think you crossed the line? I swear to God. I would kiss the tip of your bare dick. You would. For you, if you pulled it out and go kiss the tip of my bare dick. Of my Jewish penis. Whatever it is. You don't care. You're not racist. I don't think about it. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to know what it is. Right. This guy, no. He's already going cut. Yeah, this guy, no. I would not do him. But you you would really, if I stood up right now on camera and said, kiss the tip of my penis, you would do it. Yeah. Because it's it's on camera, it's a yes and thing. You don't deny. When you're doing improv, you don't deny. Right? So if he pulls his penis out on camera... It's showbiz, friend, right? So you have to yes and it. You can't deny it and go, I don't want to do it. 
that's against the improv rules. All right. Right? So it's like, that's the deal. So but I heard you, that you apologized for it. You felt bad about it. I didn't feel bad about it, but I feel bad because, um, you know, the, you know, I have some reputation things out there that aren't true. And, but it's like, it, it by kissing a, an orange man's, orange man's penis. Orange man, you mean by redhead? Redhead, orange man's penis. Uh, on camera, it would it it um validates those rumors that aren't true right. about me. Right. If he would do this, why he would do this? He would do that. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, you've done some provocative things in your life. Like what? Well, I remember this story where you took a you fornic not you uh t defecated on a Comedy Central. Uh, no, no, that's not true. It's Mad TV, and yes, I def defecated, but that right there, I don't feel bad for because that was called um, it's shadow play. What shadow play? It's a Joy Division song. I like Joy Division. And I don't know what this, but I just use it, that word, shadow play. You just like it's a, like, I we think should it's, know like, it. it's like play in the shadows. <laughs> right? In the dark two, shadows. Yeah, dark shadows. And number two, it was, it was, he deserved it. The poo wasn't for, um, just, just, shock just value. for Shack Valley. It was revenge. Right. Do you think you have to up the ante? I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you. Do you think, he, don't look at Ryan, don't deflect. Do you think Bobby Lee now? Because you're Bobby Lee. You are a, you're a fixture. Uh, is that the right word? In a in a in a on a, in America, a, a people's homes. People know you. People oh, you're, you're internet. You're my, an internet. You, have, you are an internet sensation. You have no idea people, what the fuck I've people, been going through lately. What? Well, we could the last two days. I've been like, hang on. Call, Let me finish. Because you certainly make faces when I cut you off. You look at me like, oh, wow, you're feisty today. I love it. Go oh, ahead. Fuck. You it's know, your show. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, do you feel like you have to up the ante all the time? Because I, I, I kissed this shaft or his sack. Now I have to go to the next thing because they're expecting more. Do you feel there's a pressure? Well, first of all, I think that every man has kissed a shaft one time in their life. Not by choice sometimes. Maybe not my choice, but they have. You think every man has at least kissed a shaft? Yeah. Uh, Ryan, may I ask you, have you ever kissed a shaft? Uh, no. I have not. Okay. Okay. So you were wrong. Does Kalila ever go, Bobby? Bobby, what? You kissed your friends you're in business with. His uh, through, uh, First of all, it wasn't his bare shit. It was through his underwear. Second of all, he said, the whole bit was, smell my dick. Did you actually smell it? Yeah, so he pulled it out to smell it. His real dick? No, the, what, what you saw on the internet, right? Right. So he pulled it out. He goes, smell it. And I was supposed to smell it, but a switch went off, and I went... I just kissed it. You kissed it. And it was a European kiss. It wasn't like, you know what I mean? It was, like, it was like, a, like an Italian kiss. Mwah. Bonjour, Mwah. bonjour. That's French. It's kind of, yes. yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 European. Yeah, if you, a rattlesnake bit your dick. It's, and, and you know that whole, the whole story? Yeah, I know the People story. People make that thing, like you if you, you know, when they get drunk you or suck they get it out, high, would you suck it out for a million dollars? I would suck venom out of your dick if you were going to die the, this you, you notice that what you're you're answering a question and then this is what's called the non sequitur <laughs> you completely went to a rattlesnake biting my dick by the way inside of you fans if you're listening we will get to a, to a darker place but right now we have to let some of this sort of just land which what i love i love about this is that you know you have tiger belly right now now you have a new show what's it called bad friends Bad Friends uh, it was with, in the top with six. Andrew Santino. It was in the top six. Maybe. I know it is. I've All never right. been in the top 60. All right. I'm relying <laughs> on your totally fans kidding. for for being true and loyal. Totally no, but so I love Santino. He's very funny. You yeah. guys, I, I have a great chemistry. You and I could have done one. You, you didn't ask asked. me. You didn't ask me. You could have asked me. Want to do one? It's too late now. Why? But why a year you ago? You could be why, kissing why, a Jewish guy. Why two sack. years ago didn't you ask me? I didn't, you're doing a show. I didn't think you were gonna, you wanted another podcast. Yeah, but I'm just saying you, I, I, my brother too, my brother Steve. You know, I would have done one with him as well if he would have asked me. Andrew's the one that went, we're doing it this date. I'm going to buy the equipment. You know what I mean? I, get to be, I have to be coerced into doing it. But let me ask you something. This is a serious question. I want you to be honest with me. Go ahead. Do you think it's too much now you're going to quit Tiger Belly? No. No, no, Do you no, think no. you're going to keep Tiger Belly? 100%. Tiger so Belly is my number one. So you're going to keep both of them? Yeah. You realize this is, that's a lot of work. Well, you know, Theo Vaughn has three he does. He does? Yeah. Uh he has one with Shab. He has one on his own. He has one that he does with a guest. So that's three. Jesus. A lot of people, you know, Rogan does four or five a week, sometimes two a day. Would you do this only if somebody said you can never act again, no stand up, you just do your podcast, but you're going to make millions of dollars, which you are? No, I can't do that. You'd have to, you'd say no. Because my dream is bigger than that. My dream is, uh, and I, you know, it's so funny because I, I ran into Joe Rogan last night and we were talking about how 
you don't need to fuck with Hollywood anymore because we are taking control of our own destinies. We don't have to wait in line. You know, you, you know what it's like. You wait in line, you sign up. You, you, you wait for the call. Try to get an audition. Right, try and then, to get a call And back. then when you get try on set, get... They, they tell you what to do. So you know? you're in control of the podcast. You're in control of yours as well, correct? I am, but I don't have the luxury of, uh, you know, you. Uh, fortunately for you. Look, I love mine. I'm going to keep doing mine, and mine's doing good. But, you, you know, it's like. How long have you been doing yours? For two years. Okay. We've been doing ours, what, for four? Yeah. For the first two years, we didn't make any money. Yeah, that's, it's, it's a slow so thing. But I, I love you, it, and I'm passionate good. about it. And I'm gonna very, keep doing it. You're I, very good at it. You're very good at it. And you know, when I when you did ours before you even had this one, I thought to myself, "This is something that's down Mikey's fucking lane, man." Well, thanks, dude. And you, yeah, by the way, you've been so supportive. And I will always do yours, and you'll always do ours. Your oh, family, yes. your family. So my point is, is that I don't know why I have to come in here and you be so hostile toward me <laughs> and so aggressive. You know, what I mean, you got eagle face over here writing down a bunch of notes. Eagle face, right? You got fucking. You know, you're accusing me of s sucking dicks on the sly. You know what I mean? I don't get it. I came here, and I'm always going to do this show. And I came here you know, for you, you fuck. Do you know what? I ask Kalila sometimes, because it's, it's, she, she keeps your life together. She does. And I say, hey, can we go get dinner somewhere? So she has to go through. I, I, do, you, do you have time these days to actually? What I, I'm, I, 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 let whoa, me just, let me finish, let me just finish what I was going to say earlier. Okay. Okay. So it's so funny that you say um, that things are good and, you know what I mean, this and that, because they're not. I'll, okay. Because I'll tell you why. Okay. Okay. I sit around every, I wake up every day and I still have the same fears and the same, like, why didn't this happen? You know what I mean? I wish this would have happened. Why don't I have this? It's human condition and human nature, right? You're never going to be ha happy because, because success and money and all this stuff, it doesn't fix you as you well know. <laughs> it just, it doesn't. It doesn't. No one can understand that though. If they're broke or they're not making money. They think you guys are fucking idiots. You have the rest. You have your look what you're doing. Right. Which way, and, we need to look at that. No, and then the, the the way you get through it is you go. Um, I want to do you do. Sometimes you do a gratitude list. Oh, right. I do a gratitude list. I, I look around my environment. I try to be mindful about my surroundings. <laughs> you and I. I went to the wellness center and then you went to one about a year later and I'm seeing the things that I learned through you now. Keep going. I like it. You know what? I don't like what you're doing. What? You try to skew the fucking thing to, I know where you were heading and I'm trying to go, go the, the, the opposite go way. Go the other way then. No, but I, it's because I want, I want the push and pull. <laughs> I love the push and pull. I like it too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, we'll talk about the dicks later and the sucking, but the thing is, is that um, eagle face, eagle, eagle. What's up, man? You good? No, no, go back no, to no, this. I, don't tell me what to do. I'm Great the guest. Gratefulness. But this was, you were getting deep, right. but I like uh, when okay, you get so, deep. This uh, is the real you. I want to, I right. want the audience to see the real Bobby. Cause you know, no one asked you to get deep on these other guys. Shop and all these guys put you on their show and they're like, oh, make me laugh and let's talk about shit. And I, I and if they don't want to listen to this, go, I want to get deep with you. You know, it's so funny. Cause when I went to, uh, let's, uh, let's go back to what happened. Let's go back to what happened to me in August. If that's the direction that you want to go to, all I want to know is I want you could always talk to me. I and, am going to talk to you, and that's why it's about the inside and of you. God, well, God, listen, when when your dad passed, which I know that's where it's starting. Yeah, I know your world crumbled, and it's been crumbling. And like you know, but I I told you I was there for you. I knew you were going to get help. I I don't know how many times I had to tell you I'm here. And when I say I'm here, you know, if I you're, you're deflecting, you're looking at my Rudy poster. It's a it's real a signature. great movie, though. Sean Astin, a really good movie. Great movie. But go ahead. So in August, you lost your dad. Yeah, I lost my dad. And um, what happened was my mom called me and she goes, um, Daddy, he, 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 he in hospice. I was, at, I was at a hot dog place. I love hot dogs. I love Chicago and hot dogs because of the peppers and the, they add extra like. Were you about to order the hot dog when you heard this message? Or no, I had the hot dog in my hand. Okay. And I didn't even eat it. I go, what? Daddy in hospice? And I just didn't eat it. And then I went into panic. Not just yeah, it was not even a panic. It was more of a um yeah, it was a shock. Numb. Yeah. It's like when I was molested when I was a kid by a guy with Down syndrome. <laughs> it's a true story. Yeah, it's a true story. He used to give you candy. Yeah. My point is is that it's the same feeling of just like you it's almost dreamy and otherworldly. It's not good. It's not a good feeling, but it's like, what the fuck? This is like, you know, you, you know, 
And so I called my brother, Steve, my brother's freaking out. And we just booked a flight. And then, but, you know, I hadn't been going to AA meetings in four years. I had 17 years of sobriety. And then next thing I know, I'm at a place called, um, I might have, I'm at a fucking weed dispensary. I don't want to say the name. Right. And I'm in line to get weed after 17 years of being sober. I don't know how I got there, bro. I was going home and I just pulled, it was called Urban Freeze. Great establishment. Great weed. That's where you got your weed. That's where I got but you it. But you hadn't smoked weed in 17 years. So I ordered, what I bought was, I bought, hey, do you have gummies? So I bought like 15 packets of gummies. And this is how alcoholic my brain is. I... And I, cause I didn't want to tell my brother or my girlfriend or my mom that I relapsed. So I went to CVS and I got melatonin, melatonin gummy, you know, um, candy. No. You can get melatonin ones at the sleep oh, section. Oh, they help you at, sleep right, right, right. And they, they're shaped like, they're gummy bears. So you put them all in there. But I took all the, I dumped that and I put all the weed ones in there. Sure. And so when I was packing to go, um, that's what I had. And were they really like, did they, are they they're strong? The most, they said there's the most strongest one. They're like, I don't know, 10 milligrams a piece. But also I'm not, after not getting high for over 17 years, you know, I took one and I just completely got almost way too high. Were you upset with yourself? No, because I was more upset about my dad. Right. So I was just like, and also um, I had this uh, feeling of like a new chapter. Like if you were flipping a book, that would that day was the next chapter, and it was going to be a long dark. You chapter. didn't eat the hot dog. You took the melatonin, the uh, the gummies, right. and you're on your way to your dad's funeral. No, he's or still he's alive. in the hospice at yeah. this point, right? So, um, I'm completely high. We get to Arizona. We get to the hospice, and my dad is um, he's lucid. Like he, you, you know, I walked in and 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 he smiled. I saw you. Why are you smiling? Because you just said he smiled, so it made me smile. Oh, yeah. Like I was in uh, your uh, fucking uh, uh, moment. Okay. So um, he smiled. Okay. And my brother and I looked at each other like, oh. He's fine. He's fine. So then, you know, we're like, we kiss him. And he's like, he can't talk. He hasn't been able to talk a very long time. Um, And even when he did, could talk, you couldn't understand him because of that thick accent. But um, he basically said, oh, I love, I love you. You know, that kind of thing. And, um... I, I actually, there was a sense of like, why the fuck did I relapse? He's not dying. What were he doing here? But then the lady came in and was telling me all the th problems. And basically she says, so from now on, he can't either drink water or eat. We're not going to feed him. And then my brother was like, freaked the fuck out. My brother was like, wait, 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 what the fuck? My you know, brother, Martha Steve, he's like, of course. Wait, what the fuck? What the fuck? You, you're going to feed him like in a couple of days, right? No, eat from now on. Yeah. But, 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 but he's going to fucking die then. Right? And they're like, yeah. Right? Because it's like, if he had, because he had all, his lungs and every, the stomach had so much infection. It's just, it's just what happened with my grandfather in November. Same thing. Yeah, same they thing. They just don't give him, yeah. yeah. Right. Nothing. So then, you know, now we have to sit there for seven days. Seven days. Sometimes it takes weeks. Yeah. yeah and to see your dad. So from every day, He's now like, you know, just dwindling. And are you getting higher and higher as you go in there every higher day? And higher. <laughs> go with the flow. Getting higher and higher. But are you taking the gummy bears every day now? You're getting used to it. Yeah. You're enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Steve, does Steve doesn't know about no, it. No, no one knows about but it. But no, I'm not enjoying at, it. But don't they look at you and go, "Are you okay? Are you on something?" No, because you can brush it off as tears and sadness, tired, fatigue. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I'm just tired and sad. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Because your eyes are all bloodshot. You can just, you can, you know. And um, and then my brother would stay there at nights. My brother would stay there. Sleep with him? Yeah, and he would, just, disturbing photos. He would take photos like, look what dad's doing now. And he's just like staring up at the ceiling. You know what I mean? Like, Why do you want to see that? I know. Exactly. I mean, I couldn't do that. Yeah. In fact, when I saw my grandfather last, when yeah. I saw him in the home, and I remember he was sleeping with, all, you know, he was, he was uh, sitting on the couch and all these other old people around him. And I walked in the room and you know, my grandma's like, he's probably not gonna remember. I'm like, fuck that. He always remembers me. Yeah. He won't, but he's Alzheimer's. He he goes, he, I go, Irv. I woke up everybody in the place. He, yeah. His head lifts up and he goes, Mikey. Oh. And I, it was a one in a million. And it was the last time I, that day was the last time I was with him, or I, like two more days. And then I left and then it all went downhill out of the blue. And he went into a hospice. 
And they were like, do you want to come down? I go, no, I don't want to see him like this. Why? Now, because I knew what was happening. And I knew that I, I wanted to remember him. This was for me. It didn't bother me. I, he was like a father to me. I love, I love this man. And I, I didn't want to watch him deteriorate. That was for me though. Everyone's different. And my, yeah, my, my, my you, uncle said, as long as you're okay with that, I go, Irv would fucking look at me and go, what are you doing? What is this? What? Are, why are you? He, why are you? Don't get me. He's, go home. I know he wouldn't want me to see him like that. I just know it. We had a bond. That's my opinion of what I went through. But that everything's different. So go ahead. It was. It's a chance to witness truth. Us Westerners have such a difficult time with death. You know, what I mean, in in Indian stuff, you know, it's like it's the most honest, truthful thing that you can, and it's a beautiful thing, you know, and I had to witness it. I was there when um, my dad took his last breath. You were there at that moment? Yes. Did, did you say anything to him at that moment or he was, was he in a coma? Well, I mean, I couldn't say anything because my mom and my brother were freaking the fuck out. They were crying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, really? yeah. whoa, whoa. So when he takes his last breath, they're freaking out. Bobby on gummy bears or whatever, you're kind of not okay, but you're the mellow one? Oh yeah, I'm completely namaste about it. Were you, you were keeping them together? I'm the oldest, so maybe that no, that wasn't it. In in retrospect, you know, at the time I could tell you that I was being Neo from the Matrix and being fucking cool as Zen and yeah, cute, cool as a cucumber. But in retrospect, I'll tell you what later. But what, what it was. But when he died, I didn't feel anything, and I had sunglasses on, and uh, Gucci. <laughs> and- <laughs> And so, and, uh, and my uncle came in, my, so it's just so funny. My, my uncle, my dad's brother, youngest brother drove from San Diego, walked into the hospice, saw my dad's body, got back in the car and drove back eight hours. How long was he there? For like one minute. What the, what did you, did you, did you say anything? Bye uncle. Uh, but wait. What was it? Were they close? <laughs> yeah. It was his best friend. He just didn't want to deal with it. No, it, it was really kind of cool. It was just like he looked at the body and he made some sort of noise like, oh, no, oh, no, something like that. It was no word. Like a prayer or but something. But it sounded Korean. So he looked down oh, no, no, and just got back in the car and we go, bye. <laughs> and he just drove off. Did you hug and kiss your mom? Were you like- No, we took photos. Stop. You took photos of what? My mom wanted- um, He didn't take photos of your dad dead. Yeah. My mom goes, we have to do take photo. So I had to do like the timer thing with my fucking phone. You had to set up a timer, <laughs> reverse the image on your camera yeah, yeah. and take a picture of and your we mom, got it that wrong three Steve, times. We got it wrong you, three times. So I had to reset kept, it three times. Could you imagine some nurse just standing there yeah, watching this? I know. But it was. But why? It seems odd to me. Maybe not odd to you because I, I, I wouldn't want to. In fact, at the funeral, I don't want any pictures. I don't want to remember this day. I don't want to to remember all the sadness. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's why I, I, I have so much my emotion. Mom's, my mom wanted it. Were you surprised when she goes, let's get a picture? No, I was just like, if that's what she wants. So I did the timer thing and we set, we did this, you know what I mean? And my dad was laying there. But you didn't do anything funny like- No, 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 no. With no, his no. face or anything. I, no, no, no. I don't know. I'm just- yeah, We didn't do like the Charlie's Angels. <laughs> oh my God. So it was a serious photo like, but do you smile on the photos? No, it's, it, I mean, I could show it to you, but it was- mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's so funny because I sent it to Kate and Oliver Hudson. Oliver, oh, gonna, yeah, yeah. And, he, and he goes, that's fucked up. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, it was great. You know, Oliver, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, he was shocked because he, he, he thought he was alive in the photo. He said, like, that's cool. Is your dad sleeping? I go, no, he's dead. And he goes, don't, you know. And I, I think, you no, know, he called me and I, I heard Kate laughing in the background. I love Kate Hudson, big fan. <laughs> but then what happened was I got back into town. Right. And then. Weird shit started happening. Like what? Well, first of all, I'm hiding it from Kalila, my girlfriend that I live with, who I do a podcast with, who is like my best friend. You're hiding what? Your your emotions? My, my, my using. And you're using. Yeah, well, I'm using, using something else now? No, I'm only smoking, I'm only smoking and vaping marijuana, right? But you know, when you're when you've been sober for that long, and she's only known me sober, and then when I'm constantly 24-7 high, it's weird. She knows. She doesn't know at the time. She just thinks I'm having a fucking meltdown. Because imagine like we're in bed and like, you know, three or four days in when I get back and she's like asking me a question. 
and I'm like giggling at a fucking YouTube video. So she thinks she's having a break. A break. Yeah, like a I'm a snap. nervous break. So when I came on your podcast right before you went to that wellness center, you were you were using. Yeah. You're like, I'm high right now. I remember, I think you said that. Yeah, but then what happened was, um, not only am I high, but for some reason, I can't get any food into food down. So every time I would eat something, I would vomit it. Why? Well, I didn't know why at the time, but I'll tell you why later. But And then, not only that, but I couldn't sleep. So I would get like one hour of sleep. I couldn't eat. And I was just constantly high. And then on top of it, hiding it from everybody. And then on top of it, I got a job, you know, a, a network job on a game show. Right. Right. So it was this game show where I had to do athletic competitions. Right, versus, with, a, with a UFC girl, right? You no, know, with Rob Gronkowski on oh, my team yeah. and Venus Williams. And I'm doing eight one hour strenuous athletic. Were you high during it? Not only high, not eating or sleeping. Did you have any like? Did you ever fall down and like? I need no, a doctor. I, my 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 knee blew up to here because I I I ripped a um, tendon? my quad tendon. Right, right. I couldn't walk, sleep, eat. I was dying, and like legitimately, like I would be on set in front of like a live audience, and Keegan Keegan Keys is hosting, and people would walk up to me and go, "What's are you all right?" And I'm just like, I, you know, in my head, I'm like, I think I'm gonna kill myself. That's how you felt. Oh yeah, yeah. You were embarrassed, maybe? No, no, I just didn't know what the fuck was going lost, on. Lost, completely lost. Completely lost. I had no, out of control. Out of control, didn't know what the fuck was going on. And it's so funny, because this happened in September. So it's not that far away. And you're you're grieving at the same time, but you're oh, not- I'm grieving too, yeah. And I haven't really cried over it either, right? So I'm now having so suicidal thoughts, and I'm losing my mind, and I'm- um. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. And then I remember going on the road, I would go to Portland and I remember taking my two openers who are in AA because I had booked them before I had relapsed. So I have two openers that are in a Alcoholics Anonymous that are my friends who now have to hide my drug use from them as well. And then I remember taking them to a sushi restaurant after one of the shows. And um, I took one bite of a yellowtail sushi and I vomited all over my fucking shirt. Right in the restaurant. In front of them. These two fucking narcs called Kalila and just telling me all this that stuff that I'm doing. Right? To Kalila. Now Kalila's going, my girlfriend's going crazy. Did you fire them? No. When you say narcs, you fucking narcs, you were angry, but now you're not angry with no, them. No, You're not, glad they did it. At the time I was. Somebody had to say something or you were going down a slippery slope here. Right. And then, um. Were you able to perform? I don't even remember. But you were doing your act. You knew it so well that you were able to play yeah, it I off. don't remember. I don't remember. I don't, I don't know what that show was like. I don't know what the fuck was going on. Did you care? No. You really didn't care? I didn't care. I think at one show I did like 10 minutes. I was supposed to do 45 minutes. I think I did 10 minutes. Did they tell you, get back on stage, dude? No, what are you I was doing? like, I, I don't know what's going on. Were you having anxiety? Well, you, you, can, you can always use, my dad died. Right. That's always a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. And yeah, so. It's going to work. Ego face. Eagle. He doesn't look like an eagle face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, He's handsome, though. We needed just a nice buzz kill. Inside of You is brought to you by Express VPN. Let me ask you, Ryan, which of my online searches does the government have a right to know about? Is it slurpmyinfo.com? Hmm. Inside of you every second of the month.org? Not sexual. Slimybuggercentral.com. Sanitary. The answer? None of the above. If you have ExpressVPN. Without ExpressVPN's protection, though, hackers, governments, and ad companies, ISPs, all have full access to your data. So I don't want them using my web history or video searches against me. That's why I use ExpressVPN every time I go online. I always hear about this. If you, know, if you go on Facebook, they get this, and you can get this. If they, they, they own your information. I always hear that. It's like, gosh, man, it's everybody. Who's watching me all the time? ExpressVPN encrypts and reroutes your web traffic to any number of countries, keeping you safer and secure. Simply download the ExpressVPN app, click to connect, and boom, you're protected. With ExpressVPN, you can make it seem like you're browsing from a different country, so you can watch any Netflix library in the world that you want. How cool is that? Pretty cool. Yeah. ExpressVPN is the fastest VPN I've tried. Costs less than seven bucks a month and comes with a 30-day money guarantee. It's time to stop governments and internet companies from keeping tabs on your data. Take back your online privacy, like Michael did, with ExpressVPN. Protect your online activity today 
and find out how you can get three months for free at expressvpn.com slash IOU. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash IOU for three months free with a one-year package. Visit expressvpn.com slash IOU to learn more. Okay, so this all comes down. Kalila knows what's going on. You get back home. She doesn't she, know what's going on. She doesn't well, know she that does. I'm using. No, she doesn't know I'm using. She just thinks that I'm having like, there's something going on. And then what happened was um, one day she just says, I, I think I'm going to leave. I can't be in this. I don't know what's going on. What? Yeah, and I told her. I relapsed. And then it was just chaos. Did she cry or was she pissed? I was pissed? crying, pissed. It was like chaos. What the fuck? You know what I mean? It and was, you just had moved into your new house, right? Yeah, so I'm in this new house. It's it's crazy. No furniture. It was crazy. And then I, I go, um, I don't know what's going on with me, but I have to finish this game show. Right? So I and and I will go to some place. I don't know where I want to go. Oliver wanted me to go to the Hoffman Institute. So I was doing research on that, but I don't know. But I, I knew needed to do something because I could legitimately feel myself dying. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, and it I wasn't do, just, dude, it was not all just the physical and the mania, you know, and the manic episodes and the eating and sleeping. So, you know, imagine now a month and a half, two months in, I'm still doing this game show. She's allowing me to use, I go, I, I, I'm going to use every fucking day, but now I have to use regular marijuana because the gummies is too much. And if you stop now, it's like Jack Nicholson doing coke. It will just stop his heart. Maybe, I don't know. Well, it, will, it would probably upset you because you're now you're a drug addict. Yeah, you're but I'm withdrawal. smoking now 24 hours a day. Jesus. Like I would do 300, 400 hits. Are you able to be, um, I, know, I don't know why my mind went there. Are you able to perform? Do you have sex at this uh, during this? Oh, no, my dick's broken. Like you're not even thinking of sex. Oh, no, no. You're not in, involved in sex, right? No, no. So she stays with you. She's she, like, yeah, she's barely hanging on. But if you didn't tell her at that moment, uh, be honest with her. She was gone. Yeah, but also I was more concerned. We were more concerned about like me. I lost 25 pounds in a month and a half because I couldn't eat. And I couldn't barely walk because I have no energy. And, and so we're more concerned about like my livelihood and being alive. Is it the right word? Livelihood? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And so one day I um, run into a friend of ours and she's like, you look like shit. And then she's like, and I, she's like, you got to see a therapist. You see my therapist. And I didn't know what to do. And I don't know why I said yes. I go, or I'll see your fucking therapist. But she was a trauma therapist. Um, her name was Beverly. And I went and saw her and the miracle happened. What was that miracle? So we're talking, what's going on? I, I told her I relapsed 17 years, this and that. My dad died. I can't eat, sleep, all that stuff. And then she's like, then we go into like, well, what was it like growing up? And then that's when I started talking about the abuse. Sexual abuse? No, the physical abuse. From, from your my, father? Yeah. You know, my dad, um, I just remember one time my brother and I were sleeping. I was maybe six years old. My brother was three. And it was like three in the morning. My mom runs in that into our room. And I remember her turning the lights on and she opened her mouth and all her teeth were gone because he punched them out. And then I remember him trying to get into the room and I remember my brother and I, imagine six-year-old, three-year-old, my mom, barricading the door, you know, because we know that once he gets in the room, we're all going to get hit, right? He would do shit like um, just... If you looked at him wrong, he would hit you as hard as he could with a golf club on your body. Was he drunk when no, he was doing this? No, he was just a rage. Just rage. Is this something that you always remember? No, or, I always knew about it, But yeah. did this bring it out? Did you get this bring it out? Like, all of a sudden, like, whoa, this is what's up. How, we got to start from here? Or? What do you mean? When you're going to therapy and that stuff, is that what they're talking about? Going back to the beginning? Well, no, we, we were just talking about, like, my dad. And I was saying, I'm concerned that I didn't cry. I think that's what it started. She's like, well, I wonder, so then we explored that aspect of, you know, I mean, what was your relationship? I go, my relationship with him was fine for the last, since I became a successful comedian, you know, that, you know, that's when it, you know, kind of, but before that, you know, it was just a dark. All right. So you're saying that your relationship with your father got better when he saw you being successful. So you felt like he started to love you more. Yeah. 
You know what? No, it's tragic. And and I well, whatever. No, no, no. I, I'm just. Well, I'm just telling you. No, no. I I, I really appreciate that. Uh, no, yeah. I'm 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 hearing you. So and then here's another story. I remember one time I had meningitis. I was gonna die, and I remember we lived in Minnesota, and I remember. Like my dad wanted to take the stairs to take me to the hospital, but my mom wanted to take the elevator because we're like we lived like seven floors up in this apartment building. And I remember them pulling me, and then my dad let go of me, and then he went pop and he hit my mom in the mouth, and I fell to the ground. But I visually remember that shit. That's why it's like can't get that out of your fucking head. You can't get it out of your head. So it's like you know. Um, and that was just continuous, right? So I, you always feared your father. Not just him. He would beat the shit out of my cousin. I mean, he was a crazy person. So everybody feared this guy. Yeah, he was well, like, Now, I guess the big disconnect for me is, in a way I understand, is that, but you still loved him and you still wanted his approval. You yeah, still wanted all these things. He's my dad. And even to the end, it's hard to, like, sometimes you think, I, I know he's your dad, but sometimes you ever think, like, it's still wrong. And I, I Oh, it's, it's devastating what he did. He, he, he affected me in ways that I could explain to you later of little things that I would do in secret, right, to punish myself. But he, so check it out. But once I was in her therapy office and I told her all these things, as I would remember leaving it, driving by a Panda Express, and I ordered three different meals there, three different combinations. I ate, I could eat again. By just getting it off your yes. chest. And then that night I slept for the first time in months. Have you ever tried EMDR? That's what we did. That's what I did. And it, and it, it does work. Dude, I've never been that hysterical in my life where you keep doing the same thing. Over on events, and on over, events. Yeah. Over, stay there, stay there, close your eyes, follow my finger, follow my finger. Yeah. Buddy. I did the machine. I didn't think I was worthy enough. I was like, no, this is for PTSD. This is for like veterans, people who lose life. I didn't think my shit was, and all of a sudden she taps into something. Yeah. And this devastation I felt as a kid comes out. And what's crazy about this is there's some science to it, but then you know that happened, but it doesn't affect you the same way. And it worked for me. It worked for you. So you were able to acknowledge that it happened. It's there. You somehow forgave him. Well, what happened was after going, after leaving there and eating, when I was eating, I thought to myself, what? There's, there's a connection now between my, my childhood and my trauma and my body, right? I, I could, could make that, you know, the, between the brain and your body, there's a con connection between, and I thought to myself, oh my God, there, I, I have to deal with this, right? So then that's when I went to, PCS in um, Arizona. How long? For two weeks. And it was um, from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. You're in, you're doing EMDR. Did you do art therapy? Art therapy. Psychotherapy. Everything, yeah, everything, yeah, yeah. everything. Expensive? Uh, yeah, pretty expensive. Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> so you, did you go in there thinking, were you open-minded or at first you were kind of like, uh, uh, and then all of a sudden you realize, wait a minute, something's happening. Well, when I walked in there the first day, I remember the lady, Marilyn Murphy, can't, comes out and she's explaining, and I'm in a group and you're with the same group for the whole time. Right. And you're in a group with these people that are like, you know, there's one Orthodox Jewish guy with the little ha the hairs and the hat. Paisus. Whatever. Right. And then, um, you know I mean? There's a house ma, you know, how wife. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, I had someone staying with me and like, you have to check out if yeah, you want to take a walk. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in the beginning, you're like, oh, what the fuck is this Exactly. Like, right? Oh, fuck. And, but then w it's so funny because when it was over, I didn't want to leave them. I didn't know. They're my best friends. Yeah. You know, you know what it is? You feel safe. For the first time in your life, I bet you really felt safe. Yeah. And I also like working on myself. I enjoy um, um, the process of feeling better. And dealing with things, you know? So, you know, by doing that process, I remember I did an EMDR session. And what they made me do is they made me go to a, a mall and go to a um, Build-A-Bear. And I, I go, why do I have to go to a fucking mall? And they go, well, because we want you to um, make a doll that represents your original child. The child that first comes out of the womb, you know, that needs just love, attention, affection, support, attention, yeah. nurturing all the things that a baby needs, you know? And so I remember getting the doll and I remember um, 
when I was eating with Kalila, because Kalila went with, with me to the mall. I was holding the baby while I was eating, and she cried the way I was holding the fucking doll. You're holding yourself. I was holding myself. Yeah. And you meant it. You were doing the work. Yeah. You weren't trying to be funny. You were doing no, it. No, yeah. And then I didn't, that day, later that day, I did an EMDR session where um, it was about one traumatic experience with my dad. And then she told me to pull out my doll and then, you know, tell your original self, right? You mean the, how you're going to protect him. And I, I, I ended up on the fucking ground crying so hard holding this thing yeah and then um because i didn't grieve my dad and then when i walked out of that session i said one thing i miss you dad like bro for two hours i had to have people pick me up from the asphalt i was crying so hard just from that moment yeah like it all hit you with one word, just two yeah, words, yeah, yeah, three yeah, words. Yeah, I grieved right then and there. And then also when I went in there, I got sober. I have uh, 84 days now. And so, um, wow. you know, so I got sober there as well. Um, I go to a lot of meetings every day. Every day? Yeah, when I was in Hawaii, you know, when I was shooting Magnum PI, I went to meetings on my off days, which I never used to do. So I'm very um, diligent and, um, and I have trauma therapy every week with my uh, counselor, Beverly. What does that entail? Like, what? Just a therapist. She's a trauma. Th I do EMDR with her. And so does EMDR? So I, I did it tw only twice, two days. Yeah. And the first time it really worked, and the second time I felt like it was forced. Like I'm trying to force something out of me, and I couldn't get comfortable. And I couldn't do well, it. Well, that's a part of it. So you go, you know, you have to be honest with yourself. And you know, I'm a performer. So we want to like we're performers. We want to so, do it right. Right. So I and the whole idea of EMDR is every time it doesn't is not you're not gonna have a breakthrough. Sometimes you're gonna be like, I'm thinking too much. Mm -hmm. It's that, not working. Right, you know yeah. I mean, all that stuff. So you know, you have to do it a lot. You know, and I have so many. You know, I go to different memories, and you do EMDR sometimes a bunch of sessions on one memory, but what that memory happens, it just it, it becomes smaller, and the weight isn't as heavy. It's still there, right? Yeah. But um, it doesn't. You know, trauma. Not only does it affect you mentally, it affects you physically. I oh, think yeah. it causes. I have ticks and things yeah. that have caused from from things in the past, and I'm just like, you know, I can feel in my body that they just haven't been let out. They're just like these dark. Yeah, that, I feel that same way. You're more prone to getting uh, cancers and um, um, strokes and whatnot. Body body aches. Do you feel good? Do you feel like you have you still have a lot of work to do? Or do you feel like uh, I think I'm, I'm now I'm feeling the way I should, I should have felt a long time ago. Well, I don't do the thing. See, here's what I wanted to say to you is that you don't know is, is that every time I would, before this, every time I would have a bad audition, I would have to bleed. You'd cut yourself? No, I would take a bottle of water and I'd hit my head over the head a hundred times until blood was over my face. I did that every time. Every time you, you had a bad audition or I perceived that I had a bad audition. You know, every time I make a mistake, I have to punish myself the way my dad punishes me. Oh so my God. Yeah, so, I never knew anything. Yeah. Like that. So, you, you know, yeah, for I mean, a long time, you've been doing that. Oh, for 25 years. It insidiously, his, his, the effect of my childhood has seeped into every aspect of my life. And so, all those things that I used to do to punish myself, I don't do anymore, obviously. And number two, um, because. Um, not only am I aware of the actions of doing it, why I'm doing it, but it's also, I don't feel the need as much to do it. I don't want to do it, you know? And I think and that has a lot to do with dealing with, you know what I mean? I'm not done with a lot of it, right? But during the process of it, it's really just to help me out in my daily life in terms of like even depression and, um, you know, like the things that we're saying before, making a gratitude list, all you know, doing the tools, routines, to, yeah, yeah, to do it. Yeah. Do you, do you uh, journal now? Do they show you like to journal every day or? Yeah, man, I fucking journal. I do too. I never done it. God, man, <laughs> fuck, dude. dude. By the way, yeah, I'm yeah. blown away by your vulnerability. I can't. I just can't believe. Like, I didn't well, know this is what I, you wanted. I, it's not what I wanted. I wanted I you to kiss feel, your sack, and I then, like, wanted this you is to what feel happened. comfortable. Like, just you know, to, to me, like I went through this and. You know, I'm, I'm not comparing, but it's like, wow. Just when I was like, oh, my shit was tough. I'm like, uh, Bobby went through. Do you feel like now you're. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
what? Now that I'm what? No, I just feel like I, <laughs> you know, when you're young, I, I just felt like no one was ever sort of uh, taking care of me, saying, I'm proud of you. You're good enough. All these things that you never got, you were like sort of getting through other things. Attention, funny, this, we're doing all this, blah, blah, until one day you either decide to find out what the fuck this is all about, and then you dig deep, and then you go, am I worthy? I am worthy, and I got to find out why I'm worthy, and how I'm not stupid. I found it a lot. I always thought, you're incredibly stupid. You're, uh, you're, there were just all these things. I, you know, It just was so overwhelming, and I didn't really know where it stemmed from. And when that comes out, and it still happens sometimes. I get nervous because I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I hope that I was at the magic castle and the magician's like looking around, oh, who's going to be my helper? I'm like, not me. I'm stupid. I'm going to fuck your trick up. Yeah. yeah Don't yeah. fucking pick me. Right, right. And it all stems from being that like that kid who wasn't like, you know, good enough. Dude, I fucking can't believe you went through that shit. And what's amazing is that's sort of what happened to me is I kind of forgave at the end. Yeah. I didn't think I would. It came out of nowhere. Yeah. I was like, why am I, what? But you do somehow. That's the only way, isn't it? It's a miracle, though, too, that like, you know, people with our backgrounds, you know, sometimes, you know, um, even the counselor said, and I don't even understand it really, but they're like, it's a miracle that you even was able to carve out any sort of resemblance of a, a life. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, and then they go, that's, you know, has something to do with your resilience and survival techniques. I, I always had humor as a defense mechanism and I had no skill sets except to be funny. And, but I use that one skill set to create a career. Right. So, you know, in many ways I could have become a serial killer or, or a guy that caused other people trauma. You or, think you could have done that? No, but I'm just saying that a lot of people with my background have ba crazy, the, the trajectory of their lives go a different direction, you know, but for, for me, I don't know what it is, but I was always like, even when I was 23, I remember being at a comedy club an open mic. And I remember just going, you have, this is it. That's why all these people from San Diego hated me back then as an amateur, because I would just so like fucking, you know what I mean? I have to do, this is- I have to be great. Not just great, this is it. I have no other fallback position. I have no college degree. I have no other dreams. This is your purpose. Or this or nothing. So when you're, when you have a kid like that, you know, I climbed pretty fast, you know, I mean, I started at 23 by the time I was 30, I did the tonight show, which is a big thing for a kid from San Diego with my kind of background, you know, and I just crawled my way up to that thing, you know? So, but, um, but now my life isn't about that. My life is, a you know, you know, you, you say in the beginning of the podcast, you're doing great, this and that, but I'm doing great in terms of my mental health, I think. And that's all I really right now care about. All this other stuff is fine and great. And you know, I'm blessed and, and, and happy and grateful. I get depressed. They just want to be healthy. I just don't want to fucking kill myself, bro. Do you still feel like that? Do you no, still? that's why. Right, because you're doing all the work. Yeah. And you feel like you're worthy. Yeah, like when I'm in, you know, when I was in Hawaii last week and I was like, oh, but by the way, I have to talk to you about so I, I go to Mag, so I'm shooting I, this show, Magnum PI. And this was the first test of my, you know, my mental health. I show up and the director was a guy named Peter Weller. I remember Peter Weller. He was a tough guy. He was a Robocop. Yeah. 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 So you know what he said to me the first day at work, he was directing the show. His opening line to me was this, don't fuck this up. Was he kidding around? I don't know. I don't know. He's probably kidding around. Didn't sound like it to me. Right. I didn't laugh. No. And he walked away. And then after the first take of the first day, he goes, um, energy, energy. Like that. And what you, are you doing? You didn't like this. No, I don't like it. Cause it reminds me of my dad. And when I'm in, when I'm around the presence and I told that to Jay Hernandez and Perdita Weeks who are the stars of the show. I go, that's my dad. Cause they did my podcast that Saturday. So, and they also, I'm friends with them. So they know my, my past as well. And so, um, the whole time, that whole week shooting with this guy was like fight or flight for me, man. Jesus. Yeah. It was, did he ever know that? Did you ever tell him? Yeah. I, I, but you know me, you know, for me, what I did was I would just start saying shit back. 
You're that's, my dad, dude. You know, you, yeah, I don't respond to stuff like that. That energy. Mm. You know what I mean? And then like, um, but I remember the first last day of shoot, I was like, I had this one complicated line. I hated it. I didn't understand the line. You probably still remember it. I don't even remember. I can't even say it because I don't even know how, that's how difficult the line was. Are you embarrassed? I don't care at this point. That's good. I wish I, I didn't get care. The, I just want to get the fuck out of there. All right. It's embarrassing, yeah. It really is. I get embarrassed. But what's worse was him shaming me afterwards. What this guy say? can't even, out loud, he would go, this guy can't even do one line in front of the whole crew. And they're all kind of like, <laughs> People are kind of uncomfortably laughing and I'm sitting there just staring at the table, just going, it's, it, it has nothing to do with you. This is just him. It's not personal. This is just his, yeah. his issues. And also, because I can't do this one line, eventually I think they got it. I don't even remember. But also, you, normally what I would have done a year ago is go to my hotel room and cut myself with razor blades because I couldn't do that one line. You didn't do that? No, I just sat there and went. I was so happy. I almost felt like crying. Because you... I was sitting there going, oh, shit, I'm embarrassed. I feel like, you know, he's shaming me, you know? But I could separate the fact that, you know what I mean, I, I'm a human being. You know what I mean? Under this, under this circumstance, I don't really perform great. You know what I mean? When I'm under this kind of pressure, and I know that about Who myself. Who does? Right. So, you know, I was able to put all into, a, into context and a certain perspective and go, it, it is what it is. It's a bad day. It's a bad week. I may never do the show again, you know? And um, it's okay. You know, Ryan, all I can think about is you're going to have to take the sound out of me biting my nails. I've never done this. You have caused me to bite my fucking nails. Why? Because I'm on edge with your story. Like, I've never been like this with anyone's story. Like, this is, for me, the most raw, honest thing. And I, I know I, have, I you're my boy, and I appreciate you doing, like, talking. Boy. About, you're my boy. You're my boy. But, but by the way, you know how, um, <laughs> he just wrote nails. Got a fucking. Yeah. Uh, do you know what? I do the opposite thing. And I'm, and I'm, I've got to, you're more mature right now doing what you do, because when there's a, um, somebody on set or somebody that's kind of being the, the guy like, no, no, this is going to, I always got it. My thing is like, I'm not going to fucking let that guy do that. And it's like, it's like, I don't like authority. I don't like when people, it, I could feel myself getting worked up right now. I yeah, remember there's yeah. this guy, Michael Ironside. He was a <laughs> scanner. I remember his head blew yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't know what the fuck was going on, but I was on the Smallville set and you know, I've been on the set for years and I'm like, laughing and talking to everybody and i'm like oh, blah, blah, blah. and this guy goes up to me he goes this guy huh he's directing no he's looking at me he's just an actor on the show a guest uh, star uh this guy yeah what's going on man what's going on with you huh <laughs> and i go what is he, what is he are you serious right now yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. yeah you're that guy right you know he's gotta you know, gotta be the funny guy i gotta be this and he's just like calling me out yeah and I feel it. I feel like I feel like I'm being shamed. I feel like that father figure. I feel yeah, like that's, yeah. I'm being a kid again, being reprimanded, and it's gets it's brewing. And I'm yeah. like, oh my god, I was in such a good mood, and now I'm just like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm really <laughs> uncomfortable right now. Yeah. And I go, yeah, hey man, you can be this guy when it's you know when you're one of the leads on the show, not when you're a fucking guest star. I just looked at him right in the fucking eyes. Whoa, right his, whoa, I, what are you? Whoa, yeah. dude. I was, I was, dude. That's fucking heavy, bro. I, 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 I felt I got it there. now. I felt I got you there. doing it. I just was like, you're not going to fucking come in here and like make me feel like this shit and belittle me in front of people. So I don't like how sometimes when people, when people push my buttons, I don't do it often, but when someone gets under my skin yeah. and really comes after me yeah. or just, and I give them a chance like, okay, ah, uh -huh, okay, ah. Uh -huh. And then when I hit that point, it's like, fuck you, man. Now we're on. And it was just one of those moments where like, dude, I don't fucking care. I remember there's been moments in my life like, what am I doing? I remember, I mean, I'm not I gonna get into it. Give me another story. Give me another story. I love stories I remember like my this. buddy in Vancouver once. We were just going across the street with my other friends, Tom and the knee, and you know, he, I was doing a show up there and he was doing something else and I was bald. And I remember him kind of smacking me on the bald head. It was cold. It was winter. Yeah. I go, dude, cut it out, man. Yeah. Like, pop. And I go, dude. It hurts, man. Stop that. Stop yeah, doing yeah, that. Yeah. And he did it again and yeah. again. And finally I go, hey, stop doing that, man. And then a few minutes later, pop. And I turned to him, much bigger, brawler, could kick my ass in a heartbeat. And I go, buddy, if you fucking hit me one more time, I'm going to punch you in your fucking face. I don't care if you beat me up. I will get one fucking punch and I will fucking bust your face up. 
do it one more fucking time. And I remember he just goes, dude, calm down. <laughs> and he didn't fucking hit me because he knew that I was going to fucking do something. Yeah. At least I'm not the guy where you say one thing. I'm like, Whoa! yeah, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, yeah. you got to push my buttons. Yeah, and this guy yeah, on set, yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember, I remember one director once, there's another one on Smallville. He's like, I was like, hey, uh, you know, I, I got to get the flight out because I got to get home to whatever. I have a family thing. He goes, yeah, yeah, I know. And he's being cocky about it. And then I remember he goes, and Welly knows the story. He was Clark Kent on, on Smallville. And he yeah. goes, finally, I go, dude, we got to get to this scene. He goes, you know what? We're not going to do that scene today. You're not going to make your flight. We're going to shoot it tomorrow morning. You know why? Because I'm the director. And I remember looking at him and going, guys, to the crew, I go, you know, I'm a humble person. I would never do this or say something like this unless I was provoked by a fat ass director. I go, I'm one of the leads on the show. Do you know who's getting fired first? You fuck. And then the AD comes up I to me. It. The AD comes up to me and goes, oh, guys, can we I talk love about it? I can, love can we, it. Can we talk about this offset? And I go, we certainly can. And this is a big dude. I know, again, I get my ass kicked, but he's like fucking with me. Why are you being a dick? I'm not being a dick. Yeah. And then he goes, he, and I, all I did was this. I'll never forget it. I go, look, man, like that. And he goes, <laughs> like he thought I was going to hit him. He goes, <gasps> I go, what, do you want to fucking fight me? You want to fight me now? It was so uncomfortable. I love it. It was so, but it's just like, you know, I, I guess it's like people push your buttons, I man. Yeah, and I, yeah. I lost my shit. Are you thinking of cutting that? No. You <laughs> can't cut that part. Well, he was looking at me like, that's Jesus. Golden. No, you, that's the good shit. You can't cut that. So look, I feel like you and I feel like this insecure kid. And then something comes out of me. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't be, the, I'm going to shut down. I'm going to fight or See, fight. It, I'm you cry. fight. You I'm fight. Cry. You fight. I fly. You know what I mean? I'm the flight I, or a freeze. I either freeze or a flight. You're a fighter, but it's the same. I don't know if I'm always a fighter. I think I, fr I freeze too. No, I've never fought back. But you know what? I want to fight. I think you would. I think I'd rather if, fight. I think if somebody treated you like that on set now with your improvement and all the shit you're working on, you'd yeah. be like, you know what, buddy? Don't talk to me like that. Just yeah, don't talk to me like yeah. that. Mind your own business. Yeah. And that will make you feel good. You I like remember I had a director who called me a racial slur. What'd he say? Something like, hey, Ching Chong, you know what I mean? Can't you see? those ching chong eyes or something what? like that yeah and i remember going like this i'm sorry like i cowered and it's one of those things where in my mind i'm like i wish because i was a young guy it was in like in the 90s you wish you had power or something to yeah if he now oh he, he would never work again no I would call everybody. It would it would be a disaster for him. I, yeah. yeah, I Could would you imagine I would, all those tiger belly people. I fucking, would, it would be it would, it would, would be go nuts. It would be a disaster for him. Yeah, but um, I love shit like that. Hey, listen, this yeah, is uh, I have a, a Patreon account, and these are people who subscribe to the to my Patreon. Beautiful, beautiful. And I know you have one, but they really help support the show. They do because I I I need them. I'm not like you know. Okay, this is called shit talking questions. These are from patrons. There's some good questions here. Quickly answer them. You don't have to take a long time. I want to. Raj, Raj. What's your go-to karaoke song? Um, tequila. Tequila. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't sing much, right? Is there much just any one words? Word, just one word. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you just come up with that? No. You're at least singing that. Yeah. Tequila. If they ask because I don't like doing karaoke, I'll go. I'll do tequila. Angie, what would you say is the most unhelpful advice you've given on your podcast to date? That when you said something, you went back and go, "What the fuck was I giving that advice for?" Uh, uh, yeah. Usually, usually. Um, if somebody doesn't want to have sex with somebody because it's, and I, and it just, I say, leave them. Go what? Ahead. Well, you know, some, I remember somebody saying like, you know, I'm dating this girl. It's three months in. She <laughs> oh, won't have yeah. sex with them. And I go, just leave the bitch. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. When they could have been 17 and who knows the scenario. Yeah. Well, you didn't know it was just, yeah, why did I, yeah. why did I say that? Yeah. Sophie M. Any funny stories from the kicking it old school movie? That's what we did. I remember you and I were naked a lot. Well, you showed me your penis. You first. showed me yours. First you did. I don't know if that was true. I, 100% because I remember the day. Was that when we bonded? No, I walked into my own trailer and I turned around and you were leaning against a wall in my own trailer with your penis out. Would that be considered harassment today? Not to me. That's a Korean hello. Tom, funniest story while filming Mad TV. Oh my God, I have so many. What's the one that just fucking comes to light? Well, there's one that I haven't really told much, which is just one day that a Jordan Peele, Jordan Peele was like... Um, one day he did, he only had like one scene where he had to carry in 
a glass of water. He was a waiter. Right. So he had just, right. But then he got really high because, you know, he had no line. Right. But we knew that he wasn't going to be able to do it because he was so high because he had to balance his glass. It, it had, he just had to put the fucking glass on the table. Right. And I remember we were all sitting behind the monitor watching Jordan come out and just seeing the fucking water. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's spilling, like shattering and on he, the ground. he didn't know you were fucking with him. No, no, no. It was so fun. But that was my memory. Andrew C., what's the worst celebrity interaction you've experienced? Oh, Peter my. Weller. No, yeah, but I have another one that was... Uh, who? Tom Selleck? No, last summer. And I didn't even fucking know the guy. And he kind of yelled at me for no reason. It was like, I was doing Pauly Shore's movie, which is... Uh, I don't know what it's called. It was funny, the documentary thing? No, it was a real movie movie. Oh, yeah, a yeah. scripted movie. Right. And Billy Zane was on it. And I had just gone on the set, and somebody was like, hey, look at the set. I walked in, I was just talking, and then Billy said, hey, shut up, to me. right? And I just got, I don't know what the fuck is going. No one told me that they're shooting anything. And I remember looking at Billy Zane going, oh, you want to go there? I'm small. You're a handsome guy. You're a Titanic. I got nothing. <laughs> we'll see what goes on now. You want to have a war with me? Because you don't even know what I have. I have an army. Billy, are you friends now? I'm no. just kidding. I'm kidding. Mary B, good question. Would you, could you, play a serious role in a non-comedy series? Yeah, I would love to. I know you can. I would. I've done it. Lisa, any upcoming acting gigs? Thought you were great in splitting up together in love, but uh, and love, both were brilliant shows that ended too soon. I saw you on. Yes, I wrote a show with uh, my friend, and it's about a Korean um, spa in Koreatown. And it's a three camera sitcom about a Korean family that runs this really bad Korean spa and C CBS studios bought it. Are you serious? Yeah. <sighs> but we got to write it and do the pilot. And well, stuff. that's the, uh, it's going to work. You're going to get good writers. Don't deflect with a tongue slap. Nico P. Nico. Nico. How, do you, how do you know when you're in the zone, when you're on stage during a set? How do you know when I fucking got him? Here's the thing. There's two things that you have to remember. Um, when you're about to perform, there's two feelings that you have. Number one, you, sometimes you have to push your way up on stage, but then sometimes you get pulled. Do you see? You know the difference? Pushing is like get the fuck on because you don't feel like yeah, you don't feel you like you're funny. It, you pulling is like something's pulling you. Like I can't I wait. I can't to wait fuck. to get up there. How often do you get pulled? Rarely, but when I get pulled, it's always great. Electric. Yeah, I have to take a shit in your bathroom. Can I? I think that's a perfect way to end this podcast. Um, buddy, this is this has been amazing. You got Tiger Belly, and the other show is... Bad Friends. Bad Friends with Andrew Santino. Andrew said he's going to come on the podcast. You'll get him on here, right? 100% he hasn't done it yet? No. He have says he would. Him? Yeah, he said he was going to do it. Hey, hang on I really have to take a shit. All right, listen, thank you. you know, I, I know, and I know you'll do it here. Listen, thank you for allowing me to be inside of you. I love you. This was a joyous. I want to come back on Tiger Belly, as you know. When you need a guest, last minute, you know to call me, right? Yeah. Bobby Lee, thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Oh, yeah. Dude, I love that guy. Bobby Lee, he's, you know, yeah. just a, a beautiful mess. Yeah, that, that's the best way to put it. Yeah, he's, a, <laughs> he's got a big heart. Uh, I know his story. I've known him forever. And it's just lovely to, he's just always so, uh, he's a good friend. You know, I, I, I've talked about this before, I think. But, uh, you know, the people who come back in the podcast, it's, it's really just, uh, everyone's busy. Who wants to go to someone's podcast? By the way, who wants to go again? Stephen Amell did, Bobby Lee, Tom Welling, Jamie Lynn Sigler, Jennifer Love Hewitt's coming back. Uh, this is uh, this is nice. It's nice when you have friends that will come over and because they know I love this. They know I'm doing something good. They know that it's uh, I, I'm passionate about it, and I, I think they uh, it's nice. Yeah, I want to give a big shout, baga baga baga, big shout out to all the patrons, the top tier patrons. Without you guys, I don't know if we'd be able to run the show. And that's Allison L, Andrew C, Angelina G, Lee, Barry I. Bobby Bortex. We got Brian H. What if I just started making up words? Well, like Brian H. Be Brian hot as hell. Chris. Oh, he doesn't have a last name on here. Dion K. That uh, doesn't work. Emily. Emily S. Hamza B. Hamza sounds like a new name. Hamza. Jason D. Jason W. Jennifer S. We met on Facebook. And you're just so sweet. You're a new top tier. I love you. Jerry W, you're new. I love you, Jerry W. Jill E, Joshua D, Kevin R, Lauren G, Leah S, you know, I love you, Stubby. Mark A, Michael S, Nancy D, my love. Nico, my love. Raj. Robert B, Rox Raccoon is in the hizzle. Samantha M, Sarah V, Sean W, 
Stacy L, Tiana, Trisha, Vanessa in the sky. We die, And you Kiko. Kiko. Yeah, a lot of new patrons. And uh, what a treat, man. I don't know what I do with that, you guys. Thank you, all the new top tier patrons. Thanks to all my patrons. Like I said, whether it's a buck or nothing or whether you just listen for free or 25 bucks, whatever they do, it's just amazing. It's just, uh, fuck it. Thanks, man. Thanks for everything. Thanks, That's guys. Great. Also, uh, please uh, follow us inside of you on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Really helps. Get those numbers up. Sponsors look at that shit. They're like, oh, he's got this many spon- uh, subscriptions or this. It helps. So it might mean nothing to you and you listen to it. And I love that it's free for you. But for us, it, it helps us out. So make sure you follow on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It's either at Inside of You Pod or at Inside of You Podcast. And um, again, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go start watching that. Get those numbers up. Ryan, man, be safe, be healthy. Uh, you know, here's that theme music. I love the theme music that we we, we did. It was so good, right? <laughs> oh, it was Ryan, amazing. It was just, we winged it. It was one take. Whatever it is, it is. But maybe we could write something together. That could be our I outro. Agree. We can. We write something more yeah. with words. That's the end. That's the end. Again. Yeah. Uh, so thank you guys for listening to Bobby Lee. And uh, yeah, the merch store is uh, inside of you online. Inside of you online store. Whatever. They have tons of hats and shirts and all that stuff. And uh, anyway, thank you so much for listening. We'll uh, we'll see you next week. And uh, thanks for allowing me to be inside of all of you. Thank you.